This is Thursday, yeah. May 12, 2011, as part of the ongoing Veterans Oral History Project here at the Morris Institute Library. My name is Maureen Sullivan. Our videographer this afternoon is Dan McDermott of Natick Pegasus. We are privileged to have with us today Shirley Henderson. Welcome, Shirley. Uh, may I ask uh, when you were born? March 4th, 1928. And where were you born? Cambridge, Massachusetts. And where do you live now? Natick. And what's your current mar marital status? Oh, I've been divorced for about 35 years. Okay. Do you have children? Yes, I have one daughter. Any grandchildren? No. Now tell us what Cambridge was like when you were growing up. Well, we moved a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I did not live in Cambridge all the time. I lived in Cambridge twice. Mm -hmm. I lived in Somerville twice. I lived in Medford. I lived in Waltham. Why were you moving to so many communities? <laughs> For my father's work. Mm -hmm. He was a printer. Mm -hmm. And um, I forget the reasons because I was too young to know then. Um, at, when I was 13, I moved to Framingham. And um, what, um, what part of Framingham do you remember? Uh, yes, um, uh, going down Beaver Street toward the Sunshine Dairy, one of those little side streets. And what was Framingham like at that time? Well, as I look back at it now, and I see the things that have transpired, it was a small town, but larger than Natick, naturally, as it is now, I think. Um, and, um, oh, I, I don't know, would you rephrase that a little bit? All right. Well, t uh, tell us a little bit about Framingham at the time you moved there when yes. you were 13. I know Sunshine Dairy is still there. Yes. And I, I, uh, I, was, uh, I, w I was in junior high school in my ninth grade, mm -hmm. and that was um, in Framingham on Hollis Street, and went, a corner of Winthrop and Hollis Streets in Framingham. Uh, so which, uh, which school would that have been? Memorial Junior High School. <laughs> okay. All right. And so the, you were about 13 when the war broke out. Do you remember Pearl Harbor Day? What was that like? I remember it very clearly for, for an, a, an odd reason. Um, I always loved movies. I started going to movies when I was about nine years old. And so by the time I was 13, I was very comfortable in going alone. And we had just moved there, and I didn't have any friends to call on. Mm -hmm. And so I went to the movies. And when I came out of the movies, there was all this hubbub going on and talk and everything. And, and I heard the words, you know, uh, we are at war. And when I went to the movies, I saw the Pathé News every week because I went nearly every week, mm -hmm. once a week. And so I knew what had been going on before it came to Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. So I understood the seriousness of it, that young men, in those days, young men would be going to war and some of them would be killed. Mm -hmm. What did you think about the, the Germans and the Japanese at that time? Well, I knew they were the enemy mm -hmm. of England and the places they'd already been, and that we were now on the list. Mm -hmm. And when you, were, uh, when you were mentioning that you were going to the movies that Sunday, uh, where did you go to the movies? Uh, downtown Framingham? Downtown Framingham. It's where the Kendall Hotel uh, was, and, uh, and other stores took over after the... Uh, the theater left, mm -hmm. and I don't know when that was. That was qu quite a bit later, mm -hmm. I think. Did you have any brothers or sisters? Oh yes, I had three younger brothers and one younger sister. Okay, 
So apparently they didn't enlist. <laughs> no, a no, they bit. didn't. It didn't hit their consciousness. Uh -huh. I was older. Did you have any relatives or friends uh, go into the service? Well, I did have relatives going to the service, um, and um, two two who were from Natick, one of them didn't come back. Mm -hmm. They were two brothers, and they went in at the same time, and they were assigned the same places up until then, and they needed the men for the um, landing that Dwight Eisenhower had planned. Mm -hmm. And so the two of them happened to get on the same ship, which was wonderful. Do you remember the names? No, oh. I don't. I remember their names, but I don't remember the names of the ships. No. Well, how about their names? Oh, um, Albert Scholl and Herbert Scholl. Okay. S C H O L L. Um, however, um, when they got there for the landing, mm -hmm. Albert made it to shore, and Herbert didn't. We don't know whether he was shot or whether he drowned. I don't even know if he swam mm -hmm. because they had, they had to let them off a little ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you um, ever write to service personnel during the war? No, I didn't. Okay. So They no. were older than I was mm -hmm. and they were, well, boys, <laughs> Yeah. really, mm -hmm. and uh, no. So you're about 13, 14 years old yes. with several younger siblings. Uh, what did you do to help out with the war effort? Um, well, I don't know if this is called helping out, mm -hmm. but the high, I had gone into the high school. Mm -hmm. I was in the 10th grade then, and they assigned us, assigned a few people to be forget the word now, monitors in the mm -hmm. hallways. And, and I, I wanted to do more. And so they had, um, they were setting up a rationing situation for mm -hmm. the people in town. And at that time, there were um, uh, a number of foreign people in the town, a lot of Polish people are of, of that area and a lot of Italian people, which I'd grown up mm -hmm. with anyway. All my girl, most of my girlfriends were t Italian or Irish mm -hmm. <laughs> because I lived in and around Boston mm -hmm. uh, all the time. Um, and uh, what was the question? Uh, what, were, what were you doing uh, during the war to help out the war effort? Oh, yes, I, I was chosen to be a marshal. Okay. Uh, for, for that and for the rationing, I was one of the uh, one of the few. There were probably about maybe there were about a dozen. There was an auditorium in the in the lower floor, and um, and it was our job to explain the ration tickets mm -hmm. to people who came in, what they were for, and everything, and. Um, it demanded someone who could pay attention because of the accents. Mm -hmm. And I loved doing that. I always loved the older people. Okay. <laughs> and I liked Okay, doing so suppose that. I would come in and had questions about the ration book. Yes. What would you say to me? Well, I would say you'll be given a a um, booklet with little stamps in it and you'll be able to buy different kinds of food that are hard to get. Mm -hmm. Sugar was one of the main things. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably meats, as I vaguely remember, but I'm not positive about that now. Um, and uh, of course, they would have questions like, well, what stores can you get them in and how do I get there if they didn't know about them and we were told to reassure them that they could mm -hmm. if they couldn't find out from any of their neighbors of things they needed they could come to the high school and find out and we'd be glad to tell them. Okay. Did you also uh, collect, collect scrap for the war effort? I didn't, no, you didn't. no. Mm -hmm. I did. I did get those uh, sta saving stamps mm -hmm. that you go to the 
post office for. Uh, the, those would be for war bonds? Yes. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, I didn't have much money to buy the whole war bond. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we did it, the, the kids did it by dimes and quarters and things mm -hmm. like that. And they gave us little books to put them in. And we were proud of that. Mm -hmm. Poor little mint. And how, uh, were there any um, other kinds of shortages you dealt with, such as clothing or nylon? Well, we weren't very well off. Mm -hmm. And so that wasn't a problem with us. And I, uh, I can remember getting, having a friend of mine who had an older sister who had a, a silk blouse that she didn't want anymore red and white stripes, and that was really special to mm. me. So I didn't mind taking nice, uh, you know, usable clothing. Mm. And so clothing wasn't hard. The, the thing that really I remember was the most difficult was for um, people with cars getting gas and getting tires. Tires was a real problem, mm -hmm. as was gas. But of course there were many jobs around for people then because mm -hmm. there was a lot to do and all the young men were gone, mm -hmm. and older men too, yeah. Uh, did you get a job during the war? Uh, yeah, I forgot about that, yes I did. My first job I loved because it was at J.J. Newbury's and they put me on the candy counter. <laughs> and this is in downtown Framingham? Yes. <laughs> and I became very popular with, with a lot of friends at school. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you were. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I couldn't do the things they wished I could do. But, but they uh -huh. had fun coming in and just seeing me there. And I told them a story that they, they kind of uh, wished they were doing it. But when I was hired, the woman who was on the thing, counter with me, it was a long counter, mm -hmm. um, explained to me, um, she said, you can eat all the candy you want. I said, I can? Mm -hmm. How come? <laughs> and she said, well, you'll get tired of it after a while. And I thought in my mind, oh, no, I won't. <laughs> well, in about, it only took two or three weeks. That was probably a long time <laughs> because I had a sweet tooth. Did you have any special favorites? What, of candy? Yes. No, I liked anything with sugar in it. <laughs> okay. I mm -hmm. believe. Chocolate, of course, okay. was the main thing, but a lot of other things. Okay. In the meantime, you're still uh, you're in high school and you have mm -hmm. younger brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. uh, did you ever grow victory gardens? No. No. Uh, my mother worked. Mm -hmm. And what did she do? Um, she worked in the hat factory for a while and then she went into waitress work, which she enjoyed very much, and stayed with it until she was 60. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And was this in downtown Framingham as well? Wellworth's uh, restaurant in, in downtown Framingham, right next to the movie house. Let's go back to the movie house for a yeah. moment. Mm -hmm. And of course, during the war, mm -hmm. we're watching the movies and the newsreels. Was that the main way you got uh, news about the war? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And I was very interested in it. When the Path A News comes on, came on, I didn't want anyone talking with me. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know what was going on in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, any special favorites as far as movies themselves were concerned? And did you like musicals, dramas? I liked everything. Mm -hmm. I liked everything. I liked Humphrey Bogart, and I liked uh, Leo, what his name was, was it Darcy? He was in the, the old gang, little gang pictures of kids. Leo Dorsey. Leo Dorsey, okay. that was it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so you're getting a little older. You've had yeah. one job already, and oh, I go. I had a couple of other jobs too later. That's. Uh, I worked in Gilchrist's mm -hmm. for a while, and I worked in um, Gorin's for a while, mm -hmm. and I worked in the Framingham Laundry for a while. 
Tell us a little bit about Framingham during the war years. It was just a town to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't. What I remember more are things like music and mm -hmm. and things like that. Well, aside from the movie houses, mm -hmm. did you go to um, ballrooms or band no. concerts? No, no, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. no. We lived uh, about two miles from downtown, but I had to walk that far to get to school anyway and back. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, I think we were kept in at mm -hmm. night. We stayed, we, oh, for a while at the Sunshine Dairy when I was in, when I was about 14, 15, mm -hmm. 16, um, the big thing was that the, the Sunshine Dairy then had a jukebox and they had a, a, the whole first floor was opened for us to dance in if we wanted to. So we could go up there and dance and play the jukebox. Mm -hmm. And then on Friday nights, they had cowboys come in and they'd be in, set up in front of the barns and sing cowboy songs until nine o'clock. And I had to walk home from there, which was probably a mile and a half mm -hmm. with my friends. My nearest friend was lived on 3rd Street and I lived on 1st Street, so I had to go alone and it was at night, 9.30. I tell you, I think I moved mm -hmm. pretty fast. <laughs> it was dark, even yeah. though it was summer so mm -hmm. a lot of the time. They were there all summer. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, did we ask about blackouts yet? Yes, I was quite aware of them, and we had the dark uh, green shades, and they didn't affect me personally any mm -hmm. other way. I just knew it was serious. Mm -hmm. And anything else that you might remember about the war years? Uh, you were, I, I assumed you went to Framingham High. I did. And where was Framingham High located at the Danforth time? Danforth Museum took it over. Okay. And when did you graduate from Framingham High? I didn't. No, I quit on my 16th birthday. <laughs> and then Monday morning came around and I was all happy. I didn't have to go to school and it had never occurred to me, who are you gonna go with, be around? What are you gonna, uh -huh. who are you gonna have to go places with? And, and all of a sudden it dawned on me. So I went back to school and asked them to re issue my books to mm -hmm. me and they did. But then we moved to Waltham. And when did you move to Waltham? Uh, I was, uh, let's see, it was in my junior year, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, I, did not, I did not transfer to Waltham High School mm -hmm. because I knew by kids talking that that was a very difficult school and I was I didn't have the confidence I wasn't failing but I did just didn't have the confidence mm -hmm. to go so I was very happy to go to work and earn some money and uh, my, what, my, you, what did you my do? my first job was with, was with uh, Cedric Cedric B Chase I think it was uh, it was a photo finishing lab and I was hired as an inspector. Okay, and what did you do there besides inspect? Uh, well, that's mm -hmm. what I did all mm -hmm. day. We sat at a bench, mm -hmm. and there, it was a wooden bench, and there were square cutouts where there was glass and there was a light under it. Mm -hmm. And we had to run the rolls across and mark how many were not worth printing. Oh. Okay. And, and then they would go down to the print department downstairs. Was this for commercial photography? Personal? No, no, just for snapshots. Um, um, uh, cameras and the little brownies were mm -hmm. out. They were all very popular, especially where we were at war and when their, their um, kids came home, they wanted to take pictures. And mm -hmm. we were teenagers. We wanted to pay, pay, do pictures of each other all the time. 
we didn't go to any monuments or anything like mm -hmm. that. Although I did take a picture of the Indian in front of the Museum of Fine Arts. We used to be able to take buses from downtown Framingham mm -hmm. right into Park Square. So I, I got to go to also to a um, museum. I loved it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now we're heading toward the end of the war. That's right. Do you remember what happened uh, with VE Day? Oh, I do. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I went to work with a white blouse and a red skirt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Girls think of those things, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, but I can see myself in my mind's eye. What um, about when, um, when Franklin Roosevelt died? Oh, that was later, wasn't it? A, a bit earlier, actually. A bit yeah, earlier, April, was it? April, it was um, 12th yeah, April, 45, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, oh, I felt bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought he was, I thought he was great for what little I had to experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then came VE Day. Then came VE Day, and um, it was a bright, sunny day, and I can remember walking to work. I had heard it on the radio. We, we didn't have TVs those days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, all kinds of things were going through my mind. I was all excited about the mm -hmm. whole thing happening. And then a few months later, there was the dropping of the atomic bomb. Yes, yes. Tell us a little bit about what was going through your mind that day. Well, again, like the beginning of the war, I knew it was very, very important. I mm -hmm. knew a lot of people would get hurt, but I didn't understand how many and how badly. I bought the book Hiroshima a few years later that was written on that, or mm -hmm. Hiroshima, whichever way it's pronounced. And that really gave a very vivid picture of what really happened over mm -hmm. there. And, uh, and that made me uh, remember how bad it was and how bad it is now since that nuclear place mm -hmm. uh, just w when a, uh, I don't know what you call it. Mm -hmm. I can't think of the word. That's okay. Now, you're still in Waltham. It's the end of the war. Yes. And you still have your job? Yes. Okay. Although I did go later to a few other jobs. I worked at Terrains for a while because I loved clothes mm -hmm. and I could buy them at a discount. Mm -hmm. And I had about a third of my pay left at the end of the week when I had to go <laughs> pay for them. Um, and then I, and then I did, I, I went into waitress work myself then and I did that for 11 years until I realized it was going nowhere and I was more interested in a lot of things that were going on in the world and everything mm -hmm. and I wanted to know about things. So my parents didn't have the money to send me to college. Mm -hmm. um, I really wanted to go to art school but they couldn't do that. So I waited and uh, interesting a lot, enough to me, maybe not for this stuff, mm -hmm. is that um, when I was about 32, 30, 30, I decided to go back and, and pursue a, an education. Mm -hmm. And so the, everybody was saying, well, you, all you have to do is go get a G&D. You don't have to go to go to the high school courses mm -hmm. and I said well okay I'll go in and I went in and I did the three exams in the one day and came home and I got my certificate in the mail and I said this isn't a real high school diploma <laughs> so I, I, I um, uh, they were beginning to have night schools mm -hmm. then and uh, I went to night school and I took history and I took math and one or two other things till I got my graduation. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't, I really didn't have, excuse it's me, confidence, right. but my dreams were strong and I wanted to go to college if I could. Mm -hmm. 
And so I said, well, I'll just sign up for one course. I was working full time and I was married and I had a busy life. So I only could take one course at a time and I had to pay for them myself. Mm -hmm. So I took English and um, I got a B plus and I was thrilled. I couldn't believe it that mm -hmm. I could do. I don't know what I expected they would expect, but mm -hmm. anyway, I went. Mm -hmm. And because of the money and the time, it took me 18 years to get two degrees. <laughs> but but I, loved it. Yeah. I <laughs> loved it. I loved it. And it was mainly a liberal arts degree, but I wanted, um, well, that's another thing. Okay. We can get off on stuff. I can in okay. my talk. Okay, so where did you uh, where did you go to night school? I went to Boston University. I drove there f right from work in mm -hmm. in Framingham, and drove back at night to Ashland, where I lived at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I was afraid to take summer courses because the winter semester was, were fourteen weeks, mm -hmm. and the summer ones were uh, six weeks. Mm -hmm. And I was afraid I couldn't do that. Oh. So I didn't do that for a long time. I wish I had, but mm -hmm. so I didn't. Um, and so after a while, I took a chance and took a, a summer course. And uh, the, the, um, the classes I had, I, I chose things that I wanted and needed uh, and, and went on Saturday mornings as much as I could. Mm -hmm. Let's get back to the uh, family for a moment. Yes. Of course, now your siblings are growing up or grown up. Did any of them enter the military at any time? No. No? No. None of them went to college. Mm -hmm. And then none of them wanted to hear anything about any, any exciting things I was learning. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. I shut up pretty fast. So you uh, actually were in Waltham after the war, then Ashland Framingham. Oh. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can't remember. Natick. I fr <laughs> when I was first married, I lived in Natick. Okay. Where the mobile place is on um, North Main Street. Now there was a huge house there. Okay. We lived in that house. And I, f I forget where we moved from there. I don't know. There was, I forget. Well, you were working and w was your husband working as well? Yes. Your ex-husband, yes. I should yeah. say. Yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. Twenty years, mm -hmm. and you had a daughter. You have a daughter. I have a daughter. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, she's gone ahead with her education, and mm -hmm. she's had a, a a good life that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are your attitude? What is your attitude toward veterans? Oh, I am proud of veterans, and I was very sorry that when they came back from Vietnam later mm -hmm. that they didn't get the honor that they deserved from a lot of people. Mm -hmm. They did get it and they got it from the important places and stuff but I, I remember then reading in the newspaper and hearing people talk that mm -hmm. some of them were were not treated well, and so I, it, it gives me great pleasure to do anything I can mm -hmm. <laughs> for veterans. Okay. Well, of course, in the interim, there was uh, the little conflict in Korea. Did you know anybody who took part in that? Yes. And any idea what happened to them? He came home. And who might he be? <laughs> what do you want name? If you have. Um, Julius Borovic. Mm -hmm. And where was he from? He was from Framingham. And he, he survived was a Korea. Marine. Mm -hmm. And boy, to come home from Korea, that was a rough, rough place. Mm -hmm. The cold and everything. Oh, mm -hmm. that was tough. Yeah. And did you know anybody who served in Vietnam? Oh, I must have. I don't know. Mm -hmm. No, I would have written to them if I'd known them personally. Mm -hmm. I knew a lot of people who went yeah. and came back. And, but How I, about um, uh, Persian Gulf or Iraq, Afghanistan? What? 
Um, anyone who served in the Pers first Persian Gulf War or who has... My niece. Your niece? My niece. She was in the Army. Mm -hmm. She was in three of the wars, the, the ones that just went by names. Uh, uh, Iraq, Afghanistan? I don't know if they were called a war. They mm -hmm. were called a, something else, the first three. Mm -hmm. And she was an MP. And she was assigned to um, Arabia, the last mm -hmm. thing she had. And um, the Arabian men all went to the head, head uh, U.S. officer and said, we, we can't work under having a, a woman MP. Mm -hmm. And they said, sorry, that's the way it's got to be. And luckily, she came back. Mm. <laughs> and what's your niece's name? Um, Lori Scholl. And is she um, still in the area? or She's still in the area, but she's, uh, she's not in the Army. Mm -hmm. uh, she work, did her 20 years and then, and then left. Mm. Okay, Shirley, is there anything else you want to uh, tell our, whoever is going to be uh, viewing this DVD? in the future. That they ought to be proud of every veteran that goes, even if they don't know what they're getting into, even if they're too young to understand. Once they got there, they were in it. Mm -hmm. And we here at home cannot understand what the sounds and what the dan true danger and fear was. And, so, and Shirley, what are you doing uh, nowadays? Living. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, w when I was 65 and I re retired, I said, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? I've got at least 30 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the next morning, this is the God's honest truth, the next morning I woke up and like, a voice in my own mind said, but I want to write. And so I joined a writing group. Mm -hmm. And I belonged to writing groups for about 10 years. I belonged to as many as five for, for a year or two, and it got too much for me. Mm -hmm. Because I said to myself, Shirley, you've become a groupie. Get out of all those groups and get writing. <laughs> and so that's what I did. And then later, I, I did the same with art. And I uh, go, to, go to the senior center for art. Well, Shirley Henderson, we thank you for your participation in the Native Veterans Oral History Project. Thank you very, very much. It's been a pleasure.